hero worship. A kid decides to become an android in order to avoid dealing with his trauma. <laughs> I like how it's not he pretends to be an android, but he decides to become an android. We begin with the Enterprise investigating the Vico, a half-destroyed ship that disappeared while exploring a black cluster, which is not a real thing. And a black cluster describes pretty much all of space. <laughs> They want to link up the two computers, but their signal can't penetrate the emergency bulkheads. Riker, Geordi, and Data end up beaming over to extract files from the ship's computer. Picard says he's going to beam them out at the first sign of trouble, and it seems like a simple computer-to-computer -computer link would be far less complicated than physically beaming something from one location to another. And honestly, it seems like a pretty big design flaw, because you would be most likely to beam people out in an emergency. But if you can't, after they move to the emergency section, that's pretty stupid. <laughs> they end up finding a kid trapped in debris. And instead of immediately requesting assistance, they stand there for a while without saying anything, because we haven't gotten to the main titles yet. <laughs> the only way they can lock onto him with the transporter is if they move him into a corridor. And Data says he can move the beam pinning him down, but it might cause more structural collapse. Riker and Jordy beam back to the Enterprise. And Data lifts off the beam to get the kid out. And I noticed during this procedure, no one asked the kid if he was hurt, or if he would be able to move once he was free. It's good that worked out. The kid's name is Timothy, and he says the ship was attacked by people in purple helmets. How threatening. And it turns out everyone else, including his parents, were killed, and he's the only survivor. And he ends up latching onto Data like a parasite. Wow. Yeah, I think my feelings about kids are coming through a little a little strongly on this one. The kid is played by Joshua Harris, who is most well known for Dallas, which I've never seen, but he was also in Twin Peaks. Jordy and Data try to extract information from the ship's computers, and Data decides it's a good time to try to figure out the source of Jordy's personal issues. As a child, did you ever experience a traumatic event? We get some Geordi background when he shares that he was caught in a fire as a child and gives a relatable comparison to Timothy. In school, Timothy isn't listening to the teacher, who immediately looks to Troy in complete helplessness instead of trying to actually do something himself. Geordi and Data's examination of the ship determines that it was likely attacked by the Breen, but not boarded, which contradicts Timothy's story about purple-helmeted intruders. And Picard doesn't appear to understand how extreme trauma can affect a person's behavior. Troy suggests having Data spend more time with Timothy, and Picard is happy that for once he got out of a kid-centric episode. <laughs> Data goes to talk to Timothy while he is working on his building, and Timothy at first greets him warmly, but then gets upset when Data gives him an honest analysis of the building after he asked for it. Oh man. Is it a reaction to me or to the scene? To you. Uh, you and your sympathy and empathy and all that stuff. It seems like a really bad idea to have Data go talk to him alone. We've seen many times how Data can be callous, blunt, insensitive, and unaware of other people's emotions because he's a robot, and this case is no different. Timothy tries to keep working on the building, but apparently has a two-year-old's understanding of how buildings work. You are attempting to construct the upper level before the supports are in place. Jordy calls Data away. But as he is leaving, he decides to stay for a bit and construct the temple properly in goofy, fast motion. And Timothy is impressed by this, and also that Data can't feel emotions. And when Data leaves, he walks over to a mirror, where it is revealed that he has really been a robot all along. Data and Jordy are discussing what it will take to venture inside the Black Cluster, and Picard wants more information from Timothy if possible. And when Troy goes to talk to him, he's acting like Data. Troy explains things to Picard and Data, and I would think Picard would have some sort of basic psychology training, being a captain and all, but apparently he's completely in the dark. And he directs Data to make Timothy the best android he can possibly be. Which he does by activating his hairstyling subroutine. <laughs> <laughs> Timothy reveals he's having nightmares, and during a painting session, paints something very expressive and red and jagged and violent, so he's probably feeling pretty good. <laughs> And I noticed that that Mondrian painting is still there. Just when I was thinking Data had moved on to something more advanced. And the painting is so boring that it puts Timothy to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> the Enterprise enters the Black Cluster, and Worf says it's way more intense than any other Black Cluster on record, and it's messing with their sensors. Data and Troy observe Timothy at school. 
and note that he's making progress, and Troy gives Data next steps. She suggests that Data can help by discussing how he would like to be more human. Data tells Timothy that the negative aspects of having feelings would be negated by the positive. It's a lot of math going on. <laughs> well, he's an android, he can handle it. The Enterprise is still looking to see if any other ships are inside the Black Cluster, and none of their methods are working, including using phasers. Which are reflected by the graviton waves or whatever. Every science thing they bring up, you're going to just shit all over it. Oh man, well you would think for being a space-related show that they would have some kind of real space concepts, but apparently nobody knows anything about space. I mean, I don't know about this stuff, so I just take it as it's given. I know minimal stuff about space, and I can tell you that this is all just a bunch of crap. I'll take your word for it. Data says because they're having so much trouble with their weapons, it's unlikely anyone could have attacked Timothy's ship. And when confronted, Timothy reveals that he destroyed the ship. The end. <laughs> he says he accidentally hit a computer panel when the ship shook, which caused it to be destroyed. But the others assure him that only authorized users could affect anything on the panels, because the few security features that exist on Federation vessels never malfunction. <laughs> the Enterprise is getting hit by gravity waves, and the intensity is increasing, and they can't get out. And Timothy says it's the same as what happened on his ship. And they also kept trying to increase their shields, before being destroyed. Data tells Picard to drop shields right as a huge wave is about to hit them, which they do, and it dissolves the wave. He discovered that the more energy they output, the greater the strength of the wave reflected back at them. But if that wave was already approaching them, why would that cause it to disappear? Where did that energy go? That's not how reality works. I noticed no one said thank you to Timothy in this entire scene. They could have at least said, thanks for not destroying our ship too. <laughs> <laughs> Later, Data and Troy observe Timothy in school again. He's acting human again, but he still seems sad and it's possible that it's because they were singing that round for so long. He admits that he was being weird by acting like Data, and asks if they can still be friends, to which Data says, okay. So now he's a new main cast member, and he's going to show up in every episode after this one. He can team up with Jeremy from The Bonding. Wait, didn't he go with that alien at the end? Worf was like, I will train you to be my son, or whatever. Yeah, then he got ditched for Alexander. What a jerk. Hero worship, overall. This was not a bad episode. It was another pretty simple story with a B-plot that was mostly made-up stuff. Seems like we've gotten a lot of those lately. But this time, the B-plot actually had something to do with the A-plot, which was nice. And it wasn't aggravatingly stupid like some of the others we've gotten. The A-plot could have been really painful, and I was afraid once the kids started acting like Data that it would be but I thought it was all right. The kid's arc made sense, and I was legitimately surprised at what he was actually hiding, even if he turned out to be misinterpreting things. I did think it would have been interesting if he had actually been the one who had destroyed the ship and had to deal with that, but I didn't mind that he wasn't. And thankfully, Data's side of things never got sappy or filled with dumb jokes. In the end, though, I felt like there wasn't a lot to it, and it doesn't stick out in any way. It was just an okay episode. I gave it a C+. I also gave it a C+. This was another episode where Troy got to shine as a counselor. It was nice to again have her serve her role well on the show, and she actually doesn't suck when the writing has her doing her job. Picard's lack of empathy was ridiculous. They tried to combine his standard I don't like kids to this situation, but the circumstances didn't really work for it. And for 90% of the episode, the ship wasn't in any danger, so I didn't understand his huge rush to immediately extract the information from Timothy. I didn't think the kid was a bad actor, but the writing and his dialogue was way too on the nose. He had a lot of emotional baggage, and I guess it was nice that a child experiencing such extreme trauma could get it all wrapped up in 45 minutes and make a robot friend in the process. <laughs> Leaving Data alone with Timothy was stupid. We've seen many times that Data can follow instructions literally. I'm surprised that when Picard told him to make Timothy the best android he could be, he didn't start pulling out the surgical tools to make LOL 2. The plots were an odd coupling, but they did kind of work together. But I wish we had gotten a bigger explanation on what the hell a black cluster is. And lastly, I wonder if that guy was actually a teacher, because he sucked. Maybe he was just an interim teacher since they were still looking for someone new after they shot that other lady out into space after she couldn't handle Alexander. 
Worf probably challenged her to hand-to-hand -hand combat, and that's why we haven't seen her again. I want to see that episode. I can think of all these great things he could say. I have much to teach you. <laughs> I'm going to take you to school. <laughs> Today's lesson, pain. <laughs> it was sweet. Worf could pretty much have any spin-off he wants. I'd watch it. Yeah, I agree.